So in this lesson, we're gonna cover the surface area of prisms and pyramids. So if you know the basic areas, one method to do these is just to find all the faces separately and add them up. However, we're gonna learn some formulas that might make it a lot easier and less work. Now, so same definitions as before, the lateral area is just gonna be the sum of the areas of the lateral faces. So basically the sides of your prism or the sides of your pyramids. And then the surface area or total area is just gonna be the sum of all the areas of all the faces. So all the lateral faces plus the base area. So when it's a prism, my abbreviation for lateral area would be LA. And for surface area, I'll either use the letter SA or TA. And when it's a prism, we'll have two bases and the lateral area, but when it's a pyramid, it'll be one base and then the lateral area. Name the solid, you're gonna use the shape of the base. So in this first picture here, this is a rectangular prism. This is the only solid where you can choose which rectangle is your base. All the other prisms, you have to look for what shape you have two of. So in this one, this is a triangular prism because I have two triangles. It's not sitting on its base. Um, and then you have the three rectangle lateral faces. And then this one over here, this is a hexagonal prism, and again, it's not sitting on its hexagon base, it's sitting on its side. So just be careful. You always look for the shape that you have two of, and that will name the prism. Now, if you get a question where I'm gonna ask you to find the total area of a hexagonal prism, then you would have to go back and use your knowledge from section 11.3. And remember that formula, for area of a hexagon that was that one half apothem times perimeter if you calculate the perimeter ahead of time or one half apothem times number of sides times the side length so that would be if it's a hexagon or an octagon or an onagon um, any kind of shape that's not like a rectangle or a triangle or a square. Now, one other formula you're gonna need for the homework tonight is you're gonna need to remember the formula for area of a trapezoid. And that formula is gonna be one half times the height times base one plus base two. So your trapezoid might look like this. This could be base one, base two. The height is gonna be the right angle. So you're gonna get a question with a trapezoid base and you're gonna need that formula to calculate its area. Opposite sides are congruent. So again, I'm choosing the base that it's sitting on. But again, when it's a rectangular prism, you can choose. So each of those opposite sides are gonna be congruent. The capital P here stands for the word perimeter. So in order to find perimeter of a rectangle, I'm just gonna add four plus four plus two plus two. You could also do four plus two and then times it by two. Either way, you're gonna get 12 centimeters for the perimeter of this rectangle base. Now the capital B here, this is representing the area of your base shape. And in this case, my base is a rectangle. So I'm gonna either do it as length times width, or you could also think of the area as base times height. So for this one, four times two, and the area is eight centimeters squared. Then for the lateral area, you're gonna do perimeter times the height of the prism. And the height of my prism is this six centimeters. This is the height of the prism. So I'm gonna do 
perimeter, which I calculated in the first box, is 12 times the height, which is 6, giving me 72 centimeters squared. And now lastly, for the total area or the surface area, I have two bases plus the lateral area. So my base I've already calculated, it's eight, that area, so two times eight, plus my lateral area, which was 72. 16 plus 72, and my total area is 88 centimeters squared. Any type of area question, the units will always be squared. Now, probably back in middle school, what they probably taught you when you did these rectangular prisms is they probably told you to memorize a formula like two times the length times the width, two times the width times the height, two times the height times the length. This might have been a formula that you did in middle school. You could also have added it this way first and then times it by two, either way. But if you think about it, this LW, this could be your top and bottom. And then the WH, this could be your two sides. And then this last one could be the front and the back triangle uh, rectangles. So this could be the front and the back. The blue one that I underlined could have been left and right side. And then the red could have been top and bottom. So you basically have three pairs of congruent rectangles. So you can choose to do whichever formula you want when you're doing these. All right, so for example two, I know it's kind of hard to see, it might show up better on yours. What I have here is a triangular prism. So I have this triangle base. And then remember when it's a prism, the shape that you have two of, these are gonna be congruent shapes. So these are two congruent triangles. Then I have my lateral faces. So I've got a rectangle going down the side here. And then I've got another rectangle over here. And then I've got the one across the back. So these would be my five faces, two triangles, three rectangles. So if you choose, you could find the five faces separately and add them up but I'm gonna use the formulas that we just covered. So remember, if these are the top and the bottom here are congruent triangles, then since I know the three and the four, those two edges down here, then this four up across the top is also for the four across the bottom. So now my perimeter is just gonna be adding three plus four plus four and the perimeter is 11 centimeters. Remember that perimeter, capital P, is for the base, the perimeter of the base. The capital B is the area of my base shape. My base shape is a triangle. So I'm gonna do one half base times height. So my base is four. And notice the height, they've given me the height up here. And it's the 2.8. So times 2.8, and then once I multiply that, 5.6 centimeters squared is the area of the base. So now for the lateral area, that's just gonna be perimeter times height. My perimeter was 11. The height of my prism is the six. So 11 times six, so my lateral area is 66 centimeters squared. And then lastly, for the total area or surface area, two times the base area plus the lateral area. My base area was 5.6, so two times 5.6, plus my lateral area, which was 66. When I multiply this, I get 11.2. And then when I add it to 66, my total area is 77.2 centimeters squared. OK, 
Okay, so we have a hexagon, hexagonal prism. Notice the shape we have two of is the hexagon. So now what I'm gonna do, whenever my shape is a hexagon or a pentagon or an octagon, over on the side, what I'm gonna do is make sure that I have the apothem, the number of sides, and the side length. If I do, then I'm all set to calculate my capital B. Now I could also do the P ahead of time, the perimeter. Remember that's number of sides times side length. So for the base area, you could either do the one half ANS or the one half AP. Well, I'm gonna need to calculate the perimeter because I need that for my lateral area. So let me go ahead and do that. Notice they did give me the apothem. My apothem is seven. My number of sides is six, it's a hexagon, and the side length is eight. This six that's here, this is the height of the prism. So let's fill it in. So let's do perimeter first, six times eight, and my perimeter is 48. And there's no units here, so I'm just gonna say they're units. So now that I have the perimeter already um, calculated, let me just use the one half AP. So one half, my apothem is seven, and my perimeter is 48. So my base area is equal to 168 units squared. So now we could do the lateral area, which remember is perimeter times height. So perimeter is 48, height was six. So my lateral area is 288 units squared. And now that I have the lateral area and the base area, now I can do total area. So total area, also known as surface area, two times the base area plus the lateral area. So two times 168 plus lateral 288, 336 plus 288, and I get 624 units squared. So for a pyramid, this formula for method two, the pyramid must be regular. So in other words, it needs to be a square or an equilateral triangle or a regular hexagon. If that base is not regular, meaning all sides equal, then you can't use the formula. You'll have to do method number one or not even method number one, you just have to find all of the faces separately and add them up. And we will do that on the last slide. I'm gonna give you a rectangular pyramid where you'll have to find the faces separately and add them. So method one would be to just find the area of one of the lateral triangles um, or lateral faces and then multiply it by however many you have. Method two is gonna do the one half perimeter times slant height. And remember that slant height, we saw it with cones, it's that height that goes diagonally down the side, whereas the height is the perpendicular segment that goes from the vertex down to the center of your base. This slide has the formula for total area. So it's just the area of the base plus the lateral area. And this is the lateral area, the one half perimeter times slant height. And again, if it's not a regular polygon on in the base, you have to find the area separately for each face and then add them up. Okay, so here we are. We have a square pyramid that has a base edge of six and a lateral edge of five centimeters. Go ahead and draw my square pyramid. 
and I draw my square pyramid. I draw two triangles. And then I add in these like little dash lines to show the other edges that are sort of behind the figure. So these are my edges and they're all sixes of the base. And then it says the lateral edge is five. So the lateral edges are these edges coming down the sides. And this one in the back there. So first thing it wants me to do is find the slant height. So remember your slant height is gonna go down the side of this lateral face. So here's my slant height. Notice what I've just created here is a little right triangle. So if you pull it off and then you have the edges there, So the six gets split, and this was a five. And if you recognize this, this is that common Pythagorean triple, and that missing side is gonna be four. But if you didn't catch that, what we'll do is the slant height here. So we're gonna do L squared plus three squared equals five squared. Three squared is nine, five squared 25, subtract nine, L squared equals 16, square root it, and your slant height is four. So the slant height here is four. So that's the first question. The next one wants us to find the lateral area. So now to find the lateral area for part B, you can either choose to do method number one and what you could do there is do the area of the triangle and then times it by however many you have. So that triangle face, it's got a base of six and a height of four. And then once I get that, times it by four and my lateral area is gonna be 48 centimeters squared. That's one way to do it. The other way, is method two, and that's gonna be the one half perimeter times slant height. Remember your base is a square and each of the sides of the square is a six. So the perimeter of the base is gonna be four times six. It's gonna be 24. So one half and number of sides times the side length times the slant height, which is four. Notice this number that I'm asking you to multiply is the same thing that we just did in method one. So I get the same answer, 48 centimeters squared for the lateral area. And now for the base area, part C, the base is a square so six times six, and it's 36 centimeters squared. And now for the total area, we're gonna be doing area of the base plus the lateral area. Well, I just did the base, it's 36. I just did the lateral area right above it, that's 48. Add those two together, 84 centimeters squared is the total area or surface. So then this will be 84. Now, for surface area and total area, you don't need to know the altitude. If they ask you to find the altitude, which is also another word for the height of the pyramid, we would need that for volume. So let's just practice it. So the height segment is gonna come from the vertex down to the center of our base. And then when I go over here and make a right triangle, I'm gonna do Pythagorean theorem again. So this will be three. I already calculated that to be four. So for part E, 
I'm going to do h squared, which is the height, plus 3 squared equals 4 squared. Now, you may think, wait a minute, it's that 3, 4, 5 triangle. However, 5 must be the hypotenuse. So that's not going to work here. So h squared plus 9 equals 16. Subtract h squared equals 7. Square root it. And the height is the square root of 7. So that's also known as the altitude. So here it's telling me that the triangular pyramid has a slant height of 9 and a base perimeter of 12. So if that tells me that this regular triangular pyramid, if this base triangle has a perimeter of 12, that tells me that all these sides are each 4. Now, in order to calculate my lateral area, I'm using the formula 1 half perimeter times slant height, which was given to me from the beginning. So 1 half, 12 times 9, and I multiply that, and it's 54 centimeters squared. Now the base area I'm going to have to work for, because this is an equilateral triangle, which was on the test. So let's go ahead and try it. Because, because they told me that it was a regular triangle up at the top here. And because it's a regular triangle, that tells me all sides are equal. So if it's a triangle, I know it's got three sides. So I take the perimeter, divide it by the three sides, and then each side is four. Okay, so for the base area though, I'm gonna pull this blue triangle out. Now I'm gonna actually flip it over so it's more what you're used to seeing in section 11.3. And this was on the test. So once I add in the center point, draw on the two radii and do 360 divided by three, that gives me the measure of this central angle to be 120. Once I draw in the apothem, it's going to bisect that 120. So now it's the 30, 60, 90. I know that the side length is 4, so that makes this 2 and 2. And remember, the side across from 60, this is going to be x times the square root of 3. And this will be x. My x is my apothem. So now I'm going to solve this. I'm going to solve this equation. x times the square root of 3 equals 2. Divide by square root 3. And x is equal to 2 over the square root of 3. Rationalize. And that's your apothem. So now I can plug it into the formula 1 half a and s. Or in this case, I could do the ap because I already know the perimeter. It was 12. So 1 half, I'll go ahead and plug it in the way it is, the ANS. So 2 square root 3, number sides is 3, and the side length was 4. Now, you can do this on your calculator, but watch how simple this is. I can simplify the 2s, and then this should be a 3. It's supposed to be a 3 here. And then the threes also cancel. And then now you're left with your area of just the four times the square root of three. So that's your capital B. So that's your base area. And now to get total area, it's gonna be base area plus lateral area. So your base area is four square root three. Your lateral area is 54. If it says leave it in simplest radical form, you're done. But if it says using your calculator, round to the hundreds place, 60.93 centimeters. So just read how it wants you to leave the answer. All right, last one. So this is actually a rectangular pyramid. So what we're gonna do in order to find 
this total area, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna find the area of the base. Then I'm gonna add that to the area of the front triangle, add it to the area of the back triangle, then add it to the area of the left triangle, and then the area of the right triangle. So for example, the base is gonna be this rectangle on the bottom, which is gonna be 11 times five, and that'll be 55. Then my front triangle, I'll say that this is the front here. It's gonna be this triangle, and it's got a base of 11 and a height of 10.3. So remember your formula for area of a triangle, one half base times height. So one half, 11 times 10.3. Now, this front and back triangle are the same. So I also have the triangle that's back here, and it's gonna be exactly the same as this one along the front. So I'm gonna add that twice. So once I multiply that on my calculator, this gives me 56.65. I'm gonna add it twice, or you could do it once and then times it by two. And then you have the left and the right triangles, and that's gonna be these triangles going up the sides here with a base of five and a height of 11.4. There's one over here as well. And they're two congruent rectangles, or um, two congruent triangles. So I'm gonna again do the one half, base times height. So one half, five, times 11.4. Once I multiply that, I get 28.5. And I gotta add it for the left and the right side. And now I'm gonna add up all these faces. So my total area, also known as surface area, 225.3 yards squared.